All right, guys, so we are back, and we're only four days away from the big, the massive fight between Jake Paul and Ben Askren. This fight has gotten so big, it has developed so much clout that Jake Paul tried to sign it to Team 10. Is Team 10 still around where Jake takes 30% of people's money after he signs them to basically live and, and have sleepovers with him? I don't know if that's a thing still, but this fight has gotten so big. It is massive. Major sports networks are covering this. People want to see Jake get beat. The MMA community is praying to God that Ben Askren can do it. So with all that being said, I wanted to take one final look before we do predictions, before the fight on Saturday, at any training footage that we've missed from either guy. Jake and his team are keeping a lid on things. Fair play, they, they want to keep their cards close to the vest. I do think we'll see a much improved Jake Paul, so maybe even watching some of his old stuff wouldn't make any sense at this point, but Ben Askren does have some new stuff out, and because he's so new to this sport, we can see the differences week to week month to month in his training footage. So let's see if there are any improvements from the last time we broke down some of his footage from a month ago until now, the week before the fight. Are there little things that he's gaining, little gems that we can find? And can he cover up these massive holes in his boxing game, his striking game that we all know are there 100%. Ben Askren's final training camp footage. I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about the fight. We're four days away. Let's go. All right, so we start off with Ben hitting the pads. Hands look a little sharper, right? Still not a fan of that lead hand being as low as it is and the zero head movement. This is something I talked about with Jake too, guys. It's easy to, to throw hands on the pads and keep your head on the center line because no one's telling you to move it otherwise. What I don't like to see from Ben is stuff like this. Boom, 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 right? Solid hook. Pretty decent hook there. Covers the mouth with the shoulder, as you can see. Covers that chin with his shoulder. Not bad. It's just the after effects of it, right? So you're here and then we're there. We've seen guys throw hooks in range with Jake. We saw it with Nate Robinson and Jake's able to slip underneath and throw the big overhand right. But for a guy like Ben, what I'm seeing just on the pads here, yeah, the hands look fast. He is somewhat more in rhythm, right? The feet are moving with it. The only thing I, I worry about is if the time comes, he's gonna need to move that head while he's throwing and slipping off that center line. Will he be able to do it? Or is he gonna throw standing straight up and Jake's ready with that massive overhand right that he throws off the jab to the body, right? He's here, boom, jab to the body. Big overhand over the top, and that would land clean on Ben's crimson chin. Shout out to Timmy Turner. Again, this is just pad work. I'm just taking taking little bits and pieces as I can. This right here concerns me a little bit too, right there. Say Ben does throw the jab right hand and then tries to go to the body, right? Jab right hand, tries to go to the body. He's not throwing that boom, boom, bang, right? He's throwing boom, boom. Like it, it's, it's almost in slow motion, and I'm not messing with the speed on the video. I just worry that that is going to get him caught because Jake's going to headhunt him. And we've seen Jake have the ability to step back, draw shots out and throw an overhand right. Step back, throw a check hook. I know Ben and his camp are OK with taking some shots to get to the positions they want to get to. But some shots can still turn into big shots. And Ben can take a few, I'm sure. But you don't want to take more than you have to. That's all I'm saying. A little head movement there. But again, we're swinging from the waist, man. Everything coming from the waist. This just looks to me like an ending sequence for either guy, right? Trading hooks right there because I could guarantee you that staying in the pocket, Jake's going to throw. And if Ben's going to stay in there and trade with him, someone's going down 100%. If that sequence happens and they're both trading hooks and trying to roll and trading and staying in that same range, no one's moving out of range, someone's eating canvas. If your team asks and it's either all the way in where you're, you're finding ways to get inside of Jake's range and land big time shots of the body or it's all the way out because you don't want to stay in that range where he's comfortable and you're just getting tagged in the pocket. That's not what you want. By the way, what the hell is this? I can't focus with Jake Paul's fucking nose in the background. Now this folks is Gabe Rosado. This is uh, a, a former world title contender. Uh, you guys might've seen him in the Creed movies. He's legit. This is the most legit guy Ben will ever be in a boxing ring with as far as actual boxers. So this, I mean, if we get anything meaningful here, this will be the time. So let's take a look at this. What concerns me once again is, is Ben looks like he's being left behind a little bit here, right? You got the double underhooks, right? Ben trying to come in for this clinch. Great frame from Gabe Rosado. This right hand replaces that lead hand. Boom, over the top. Ben has nothing for him. That kind of stuff concerns me because that doesn't something a high level guy needs to do. Jake can easily frame Ben with that lead hand. Boom, and bang the right hand over the top. I don't want to see Ben trying to get double underhooks with this kind of space between them, right? Because this is still enough space for Gabe to replace that lead hand and bang the right over the top. Nice jab. Beautiful body shot. Again, this left hook is there. Should Gabe want to switch stance off the big hook? Boom, and throw the left hook behind it. Ben's chin's there to be taken, man. 
I hate to say it, but again, this is a world championship level boxer. Obviously, Jake's not that, but these are simple little things. Slips the jab. Left hook over the top. Lands on Ben hard. Ben takes it well with headgear on. And again, how bad was Gabe trying to hurt him, you know? Boom. Slips under the jab. Ben tries to turn with that hook and put up his guard, but the hook still sneaks in. Clips him. Right here is where Ben has to be successful, leaning on him. Now, the referee is obviously very important in that equation as well, but Ben has to be successful here. Right here, Gabe's lower than Ben is. If I'm Ben, I'm lower than Jake at this point. I want to be the low man. Yeah, on the break, he might be able to land some things, but I would rather be the low man working the body if I'm Ben right here. Boom. Right hand. Boom. Left hand. Ben puts up a guard. Still lands. Arm fighting, arm fighting. I know it's probably the round, but again, what happens if Ben has got these double unders like he's used to getting or even over grips or a, a, a collar tie and they separate and on the separation, Ben is still reaching Jake, boom, right hand or Jake, boom, uppercut. There's a difference in, in welcoming the clinch and, and looking for that clinch and chasing it. Ben cannot chase the clinch. We saw Nate Robinson chase and run and Jake is so easy to disengage. He's so easy to, to fight off that back foot. If Ben chases, if he's got the clinch on on. Jake, middle of the ring, referee comes in to separate, or Jake tries to separate, and Ben goes chasing and lunging with those arms out. That's basically wide open spaces. Jake is going to blast the uppercut. He's going to throw the overhand right. There's a difference in welcoming the clinch, and when it's appropriate, putting that weight on Jake and making him hold it and continuing to do that for eight rounds versus chasing it, because chasing it will get Ben knocked out 100%. He can't do that. Here's my thing. Don't worry so much about boxing boots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've talked about this ad nauseum in my videos. Ben cannot worry about going in and throwing the cleanest jab and doubling up. That stuff is not going to matter as much as the simple things. Keeping those hands up. Making sure he enters the clinch safely and exits it safely. Take advantage of that time when you're, again, out of the danger zone. When you're in close. That's your spot. That's your position. That's where you're a master. Surprise Jake with a right hand. Surprise Jake with some shots of the body and then enter into position safely and exit them safely. But he has to find a way to break Jake's timing and be in better positions. He has to. Slip, roll under, left hook, right hand. Again, I gotta say, Ben's hands look quicker. They they look far better in, in, the, in the month or so since we looked at him last. The hands look quicker, they look sharper, right? The, the straight right hand's throwing with some kind of rhythm. Fair play to Ben, he, he's getting better, no doubt about it. Little slip, boom, boom, boom. Hey, uppercut underneath. I like this too, man. I like this. It does no good just to clinch Jake, right? Yeah, he has to hold your weight for a little bit, and that, and maybe that'll pay dividends. But if you're Ben, you're the aggressor. You're the one trying to push the pace on Jake. So as you break this clinch, you give yourself enough space to throw shots, but not enough to get caught, right? Enough to throw some shots, but not enough to get caught. I would like to see that back here. Obviously, that's not a good look as far as where that is. We'd like to see that right hand back. But the general premise here, try to break the clinch and land shots. Jake's going to look to land too as they break. Like I said, he is going to try to disengage at all costs. And when he does, he's going to look for openings. And they, if this stuff happens, will be there. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom. Woo! I know the hands are by the waist a little bit, but look at this snap, guys. Ha, ha, ha. Okay, Ben. Okay, that's a little more sting than I've seen out of Ben, right? He's starting to get the muscle memory of boxing. It's, yes, Ben's never going to be the best boxer in the world. He's never going to have the most power. But a lot of that power is developed by doing this over and over. That muscle memory develops. You've heard Jig talk about this even. The more you do it, the power will show. Ben just hasn't had to access it, therefore doesn't know how to. A guy of his size, he's going to have some power in his hands. Tyron Woodley calls it dumpy power. He's going to have some. It's just the ability to, to showcase it through crisp technique. That was a lot more crisp and a lot more snappy than I've seen Ben throw a lot of his combos. The guy is learning. Right hand, right hand, right hand. Hey, that four punch, man, I'm telling you. Those punches look a lot more snappy. Head movement, again, I would like to see that head movement be with those hands still somewhat close to his face, but we'll take it. It's not bad. Not bad, man. Okay, so there you have it. Listen, there's not a lot of sparring there. We did see him going and, and moving around a little bit with Gabe Rosado, but I gotta say, I gained some confidence in, in some areas here with Ben, and I still have my apprehensions. Again, just kind of where he holds his hands and how he throws and how he moves and where his head stays when he throws. 
that stuff doesn't look like it's going to change. And to be fair, in three or four months, that stuff's hard to change. Those, those habits are hard to put down. But what I did see from him in this video that does give me a little bit more confidence that he's going to go in and at least hold his own, he does have a little bit more snap on those punches. You saw that that last footage was the most recent with, with Freddie Roach. He is snapping out the four punch combo. But the big question is, has he learned enough and can he apply it in a real fight situation like Jake is going to be able to? Because again, while I do see some things that, that make me confident in Ben's ability, I see others that, that Jake is absolutely going to exploit. Things that Ben does that scare me, obviously, is that chasing the clinch. And you've seen it a couple times in this footage where he will go and try to chase that clinch as they break. Or when he gets into that pocket range and he's not quite comfortable staying there, that decision to kind of just throw the arms up and look for that clinch or throw the underhooks out and try to grab the body, that's going to get him knocked out or it's going to get him hurt badly. Jake is the guy with the power, the speed, the technique. And like I said earlier, Ben has to be a master and has to win the timing and the positioning. So my biggest takeaway as we head into this fight, we are four days away. Ben looks better, but is it good enough? His striking looks more crisp, but has he learned enough? Can he apply it? Or after a decade of not really being a competent striker at all, will he refer back to what got him to the dance? The clinch at all cost method, which will get him hurt or knocked out. That stuff can't happen if Ben wants to win. I saw some things I liked. I saw some things I didn't. Make sure you guys are here Saturday so we can watch what happens together. Ben definitely has a shot, but he's got to be a master of positions and timing. I guess I'll just go ahead and give you guys my pick for this fight on Thursday. The prediction video is out Thursday, guys. You do not want to miss it because my pick, gotta say, it's going to surprise you.